Hello everyone, I'm Trey Rich coming to you live from Hades. It's hot here in Los Angeles, but it's okay because we have a show that is hotter. On today's show, Ray talks to Laz Alonzo of The Boys, then we check in with Capitol Records' Wally the Sensei, in our artist spotlight we have internet sensation P2 is the name, and then we check in with the round two acts from America's Got Talent. So sit back, grab an ice cold glass of whatever while we start the show. What's up, everybody? My name is Laz Alonzo, and I play Mother's Milk on the Amazon Prime hit TV series, The Boys, and I got one thing to say. Let's get buzzed. The Boys debuted on Amazon last summer to a lot of critical fanfare and ended up gaining the support of millions of viewers as well. The Darkly comic series goes way beyond anything that fans of other recent superhero shows would be used to and brought audiences a gritty world filled with shocking moments. Fans are now eagerly awaiting the premiere of season two coming the first week of September. Ray talks to Laz Alonzo who plays anti-superhero Mother's Milk on the show to give us some insight on the new season. Hi guys, I'm Ray, and of course, we are here with The Buzz. I'm with Laz Alonzo, who stars on The Boys, an Amazon original, and we're going to talk all about that today. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm over here melting. It's about 107 degrees in LA, and uh, I'm trying to stay as cool as possible. So I know. I'm going to make it through this interview without passing out. Yeah, the heat waves are incredible for those of you who are not in LA. The heat waves are crazy there, but you know, we have to talk about this, this project that you're working on because you have a long movie history, series, all of that stuff, but now you are a superhero. Is your 13 year old self kind of glad to be this, this kind of superhero <laughs> figure? You know what? Uh, my 13 year old self is excited every time I step on set and I see, you know, what ridiculous world they've created for us that day. Um, season two is a lot deeper as far as like uh, giving you backstory and context as to who we were prior to where you find us in season one. So you're going to find out more about us as, as vigilantes um, and our origin stories, but also it gets bigger. Like, you know, the, the, our executive producer, Eric Kripke said next season or this season, when we were talking about season two, he said, I'm not going to try to outdo season one. He said, I'm not going to try to go bigger because if, if I do that, I feel like we're going to set ourselves up to have to outdo each other, our, what we did last season every year. He said, what I want to do is I want to go deeper in the characters and bring people into like everybody's dysfunction. And we did that and we went bigger. So, you know, you'll see it is a bloodier, bigger season, season two. So for those who are not familiar with the show, give us a quick... Uh, description of your character. Okay, so I play Mother's Milk. I'm a member of the boys. Now, the boys are not superheroes. We are anti-superheroes. The soups are the superheroes on the show. They are, you know, your traditional, you know, like we call them, the, they, we have a, they have a group called the Seven, you know, almost like the Avengers or like, you know, the Justice League. You know, on our, in our universe, they're the seven. And, you know, you got A-Train, who runs really fast. You got Homelander, who's the leader of the seven. And he's kind of like this indestructible, you know, Superman-ish type of guy. You got Ma Queen Maeve, you know, who's like your Amazon goddess. Uh, you got the Deep, who is the ocean, you know, lord. Um, Starlight, which is kind of like this, you know, young like cool, like electricity um, hero. Uh, and then you have uh, Black Noir, which is kind of like a ninja. You know, he's, he's kind of like, you know, very mysterious. He doesn't talk. And then you have a couple of other superheroes that used to be part of the Seven that got demoted. You know, Lamplighter was part of the Seven at one time. He'll be introduced in season two and you'll get to see his backstory. Um, and he manipulates fire. And then there's a new character that's introduced to the seven in season two, played by Aya Cash. Her name is um, Stormfront. And she is, uh, manipulates storms and natural uh, lightning type energy. Uh, so, you know, but all these characters, although they're superheroes, unlike your traditional superheroes, they're not perfect. You know, uh, they have uh, 
they're vain, they're narcissists, they get paid to do endorsement deals, um, they're jealous of each other, they're insecure, they do drugs. Um, so it more or less pulls away that veil of perfection. You know, like when you watch other superhero universes, the superheroes are just good natured. They're just good people. You know, their only uh, flaw is that they love humanity so much and they're willing to risk it all to save humans. Here, they don't have humanity. They love themselves and they love power and they love their position. And they love the fame that comes along with being in the seven and they'll do whatever it takes to stay in the seven. You know, cause there's always a lower superhero trying to take your spot. Now us, the boys, we see right through them. You know, we're basically like, man, the seven, they're trash, they're liars. You know, they're abusing their power. You know, they're, 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 nobody's checking them. Somebody has to check them. And we don't have powers, you know, but what we have is each other. And uh, there's, a, there's a story, there's a, there's a monologue in season one where Butcher basically pulls us together because we're basically, we don't really like each other in The Boys. We once did, and you'll get to see that in season two also, a little bit of our past history when we used to get along. But some stuff happens, which you'll find out in season two, as to why a lot of us don't get along with each other anymore. But, you know, Butcher and trying to rally us together, he says, yo, man, we're the Spice Girls. You know, and he's giving me that monologue. And I'm like, what are you talking about the Spice Girls? And he's explaining that the Spice Girls, by themselves, nobody really cares about who they are by themselves. But together, they're the mom and Spice Girls. You know, and so that's basically how he describes the boys. Like, together, we can't be stopped. Before I let you go, I do have to ask you about another series that you're in, because I know people are really curious. Um, and so... Uh, power is this kind of spin-off is or kind of new I don't even know what to call it you can kind of give me the 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 terminology for what you call this this new part of power but you are a part of that as well is that something um that is a complete character switch and is that something that we had to have been watching power before to get to or how's that going for you no you don't have to have watched power before to uh know who my character is he's a a new character being introduced in the spinoff. Um, uh, it's great to be a part of the spinoff because uh, it's almost like unfinished business. You know, when, when Courtney launched Power, the first Power, uh, her and I met and I wasn't available because I was under contract with another studio. So I was unavailable to, to be available for Power. And so now that she's got this spinoff, um, and I can now have a little more mobility because I'm not, you know, under that holding deal and I can play with them and come and, and you know, do a little cameo on, on the new series. It's dope because we both have been uh, fans of each other and watching each other's, you know, shows do well. And, and I'm tremendously proud of what she did with Power, the original series. You know, I knew that show was going to be a hit when I read the script you know, three, four years ago. And it was a hit, you know what I'm saying? It, there was, it was impossible for it not to be a hit because it was already a hit when, when she wrote the script. It was on the page, you know? So she's a brilliant writer. And, um, and when she brought this character to me and, and was kind of like, what do you think? I was like, yeah, man, this is almost like, you know, what we weren't able to do years ago. So uh, I can't really expound too much on it but um i'll get you in trouble <laughs> no 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 i mean you know i'll just say that uh it, it is a it is a necessary okay uh your your hero is only as good as his antagonist he's only as strong as his antagonist he's only as brilliant as his antagonist so the better the antagonist the more, the higher the mountain your hero has to climb. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time uh, for being with us. And of course, we're looking forward to all of the projects you have coming out, but especially the boys. So thanks again for taking time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 
The Boys Season 2 starts September 4th and Power Book 2 starts September 6th. Don't go anywhere, we have more show to go as we stop by Wally the Sensei's LA Backpack Giveaway and then talk to P2 is the name in our artist spotlight. We'll be back after this. This past weekend in LA, Wally the Sensei held a backpack giveaway for the kids in his neighborhood going back to school, and also recently just dropped the music video for his new single, Scandalous. Let's take a look. Oh, this is the first annual backpack giveaway for the kids that we're doing for the back to school event. Kids is everything. They they gonna run the world when we old. Oh well, it, it's just a real life situation. It's just one of those things that that was real relatable. Shooting a video was fun. Uh, this was one of the locations that we stopped at actually. Well, music don't stop. It don't matter what's going on. That's, I, I'm kind of lucky that I'm in like the one, the one thing, the one profession that don't stop for nobody. The music gonna continue to connect people and travel. We working on this, this EP right now for sure. I think they gonna like these. The streets gonna. I think the streets gonna let us take. I was at school one day. Somebody called me Wally, and it just it stuck. My boy uh, Josh, I forgot his last name. Yeah, my boy Josh, he called me Wally, and everybody just started calling me that. The sensei part come from me. I used to do karate. Oh yeah, on oh, everything is at Wally the Sensei. At Wally the Sensei. Twitter, Instagram. The only thing that's not Wally the Sensei is uh, Snapchat. What's up, y'all? My name is Wally the Sensei, and you just been buzzed. Scandalous is out right now on Capitol Records and available on all streaming platforms. Now, if you haven't heard of P2 as the name, then you soon will. P2 started out as a YouTuber, a gamer on his channel, and branched out to doing skits and giveaways to the excitement of many fans. He now is trying his hand at music and just released a single called Speedway that gained a million views during just the first few hours of the release. Let's check it out. Um, my name is P2, man. My name is Philip, but hey, you guys can call me P2, wherever the case the case it wanna be, man. My name is Philip on the wall, you know. Speedway, spend hella bands on the weekday. All of my were dosey. Vivian's diamonds, I don't play. Speedway, all of you is cheesecake. Game to the best is pre cake. You watch my vids on replay. Damn. Basically, it all started like with my big brother, because both of our, you know, our government's name starts with a P. So his name was Patrick, my name is Philip. you know what I'm saying? So they just call me P2 in school. I was playing football and everything. Speedway, man, it was something that on my channel that like a lot of people were just hyped about, you know? A lot of people were hyped about. Um, I recorded it on Christmas. Fun fact, I recorded it on Christmas. It was one of those days where I was just bored and I just finished like the hook of it. And I threw out the hook like at the end of one of my videos, you know what I'm saying, just playing around. Yeah, a lot of people are like, yo, this is fire. Like, is, is this like a like a full song? I'm like, nah, the song's not done yet. They're like, yo, you should you should make like a full song of that. So time time start going by and a lot of people are like, yo, finish this song. I was like, okay, get it. So that that's how Speedway came along. And once I dropped it, I, I feel like like the initial reaction was just crazy because people were expecting it. Like it hit like a million views on YouTube like in one day. And a lot of people always ask me, they're like, they're like are you gonna do music officially now? You know, because like Speedway right there, that was like my, that was like my first official single. Um, I, I dropped a song before called R.I.P. It was like a diss track, you know, like that was around the time where YouTubers were doing diss track. It, it was like a little trend people were doing and that diss track blew up on YouTube right now. It's at, it's at like 5 million views right now. 
but at the same time, like I didn't really take that song that serious in terms of like an artist level. It was just kind of like, okay, let me just, let me just throw some bars because I, I feel like I have a pen with it. So I just threw out some bars. And it, it did good, but I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought of it. I just thought about like on the YouTube level, you know what I'm saying? Speedway's like the first song where I was like, okay, uh, let, let me let me take this serious, you know? So yeah, and then it went it went crazy. One million views in one day, you know. I feel like it could come off as cocky, but like I feel like I'm confident enough to say like anything I touch, I could really like, you know, I, I could put my flavor on it and put my spice to it. You know, I think I think I think it's just growing up and having like that inner childhood in you that's very, very creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I still have a lot of things that I want to, like, put my foot in. You know what I'm saying? That I feel like I can do as well. Um, I feel like music is just one of those things where, like, just kind of, just kind of, like, studying around, kind of seeing people that are blown up, like, in front of my face. Like, try, like I, I tend to just look at people's formulas and be like, okay, that's that's what he's doing, right? That's what he's doing, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like gaining that knowledge that when, when it's finally your time to hit the ball at the bat. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I know what I'm doing. because like, I study. I, I see what works, you know? So, uh, they got, the name is pretty much Pichu's name on all platforms. Pichu's name on IG, Twitter, YouTube. The second channel is Pichu Plays. Um, the TikTok is Pichu's the name, bro. Just type in Pichu's name, I'll pop anyway, up somewhere. Anyway, uh, it's just more Pichu's name and you just been like bugged, boy. After the break, we have round two acts from the AGT quarterfinals to talk about their show experience and performing in front of millions around the world, but no fans in front of you. Kind of like me on the show. We'll be back after this. feel kind of doing this you know outside not near a live audience all these different things you know i couldn't be more proud of of all of the contestants and the tv it would have been so easy for them to go do you know what we'll postpone we won't do agt we'll we'll yeah. wait and so for everybody to go do you know what we're going to meet this challenge and we're going to make a television show that works under these conditions it's not easy and uh, uh, but at the same time, to be a part of it is incredibly exciting. And for this virus, bro, how about you guys? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ray. Um, yeah, just being a part of this season in such a weird, unique way, where it's such a blessing because like, it's like we get to entertain still for people. We have that opportunity and especially like our performance was outside. And it like it was an amazing experience because we get to like stretch what we could do. We're not holding back anymore, and the limits of what my, me and my brother could do in Diablo Tricks is uh, out of this world. And um, unfortunately, the the live audience isn't there. And if you could tell from our first edition, we feed off the audience and we need them to be here. But obviously, we're here to adjust, and it, it, it's a very it's it's like we're maturing through this process, and we're. We're growing professionally and learning how to adapt with any situation. Was this any different for you guys? I know you've been watching um, this show and you've seen how it goes, but now you had to kind of do it in a different format with no audience. How was that for you guys? Uh, with no audience, it is a weird um, environment because there is not a lot of actual audience feedback you can actually feed off of when you perform. So it does give off a different vibe, but um, the boys and I, we didn't let that uh, distract us, and we really tried to give us uh, give off a good uh, performance. All right, what about you, Alexis? Well, for me, um, it was kind of weird because my audience wasn't talking or moving, but there was a big audience of teddy bears, <laughs> so it was fun. But they weren't talking or moving. Asking, um, is there anything different you'll do next time? Now knowing the format, and now kind of have, being in the swing of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, differently, I, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a challenge. Is coming up with a brand new thing, you know. Um, I think that's a challenge for me, especially from uh, not doing it to any stage performance to, to trying to make my act stronger to the take it to the next level. So that's that's going to be a challenge. But I'm, I think I'm ready for it. There's a lot of things that I haven't shown AGT and a lot of stuff that I'm ready to unpack. So, <laughs> well, you know, Simon not being there is a bummer, of course. Um, but the first and the golden buzzer moment, like I was born in 1980, okay? Like I've been growing up with Simon Cowell for like a minute. <laughs> and getting to meet Simon Cowell 
and and him being so warm and actually like a completely different kind of vibe than the the, the, the vibe that you think, you know? Oh yeah, he's lovely. <laughs> right, and he just, he gave us a standing ovation and he was super down. I mean, all the judges though have been like incredible. Um, the first time I felt like how he didn't quite, like he liked us, but he wasn't like, he wasn't so like DOW and down with us, you know? But uh, but this time he gave us a standing ovation and was really feeling the, the performance. So yeah, they're all they're all pretty magical people, magical unicorns. I love all the judges, they're great. <laughs> what has the feedback been like for you guys? Are your phones blowing up? Are your family, you know, calling you? Have you been getting a lot of messages? How has it been? Everybody from our family, friends, everybody supported us so uh, so greatly that way. We felt very nice to be able to perform for them because it was it all comes down to uh, the people who love you and who like you should like what you are doing. And we did, uh, and we are so proud that we we are able to touch their hearts. And globally, we got messages throughout our Instagram and Facebook, and people were people showered with uh, words of love and support for us. It was really a great, uh, and uh, it it was a very blessed feeling for us. All right, so for you guys, Bad Salsa, you have to, of course, perform remotely from India. So if you move on, will you be able to travel? Would you be looking to come to LA or would you probably still be there? So it, it all depends on uh, the government and everything they're doing for the COVID-19 restrictions and the travel plans that they're having. But yes, uh, we really like to perform in America and uh, we love the audience, we love their support and how they cheered us for in the audition. That was so great and so energetic. It just blasts out the inner self of ourselves. And we, we feel we feel the vibe and we, we, we have been touched by them. And we really want to get over there and perform in front of the judges. And we really missed Simon sir this episode because he loves us way more and uh, we really are looking forward and we wish him that he get well soon and come uh, as soon as possible to the show. Thank you so much guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. America's Got Talent airs Tuesdays and Wednesdays on NBC, so check your local listings. We'll be back after this. That's all we have. Special thanks to Ray Williams, AGT, NBC, Laz Alonzo, Amazon, Wally the Sensei, Capitol Records, and P2 is the name. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and double tap us on Instagram, all at buzz underscore access. If you're in LA, stay cool and stay safe. I'm Trey Rich, love and light to you all. I got bitches trying to kill me, kill me. For some that I forgot I did. I did. But you know that's just a life I live. I live. Every piece that I ever For more stories and extended clips, go to thebuzzallaccess.com. I'm Trey Rich, and you've just been buzzed.